Um, we'll start by looking first at the um, the diencephalon, which if you just take your, your brain would normally be, I'll get it put together like this. If you take all of this cerebrum off the outside of the brain, you're left with this, what we call the diencephalon up here. What I'm holding right here is your brain stem. Remember that. And so you have a diencephalon. And your diencephalon is made up of primarily these two big egg-shaped structures here, which are known as, each one is called a thalamus. Um, together they are thalami. But each one of these is a thalamus. And if you open this up and split the brain right down the mid-sagittal section, you can still see the thalamus right in here. So it kind of makes a little egg-shaped structure on the inside of there. Well, the thalamus is just a relay center for the brain. So it has all of these nuclei or groups of cell bodies in it that kind of, it, it decides where it's gonna send out information. So if you have this big egg-shaped thalamus and it's got all these different nuclei in it that kind of tell, all right, we're gonna send this information there or this information somewhere else. Then underneath the thalamus, you have this structure it's actually not a structure, it's a region known as the hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus is actually, um, you can see it real well on the models. It makes, like if there's your thalamus, there's a little W that forms right there. So the inside the W there, that's what we would call the hypothalamus. Remember hypo is under the thalamus. So that W underneath the thalamus is gonna be the hypothalamus. Now, your hypothalamus is not a specific structure, but it's just a region under here. And we sometimes refer to that as being the chemist of the brain. So the hypothalamus is going to be constantly sampling your blood and trying to find out, you know, what's going on. So it's going to control your um, ion movement in your body. It's going to control thirst. If you don't have enough water in your blood, it's going to make you thirsty. If you, you know, it controls your sleep patterns, your sexual patterns, just about everything is under this kind of hypothalamic area that tells it what to do. Coming off of the hypothalamus though, you're going to have this little stalk with a little P-shaped organ on it. That's known as your pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland is commonly called the master gland because it takes the information that the hypothalamus has found and it tells your body what hormones we're going to put out. It shoots them out and it's going to tell your body what to do. It hangs off of this little stalk known as the infundibulum. I'll get this right. And this is all located on the models. If you look real close here, you can see there's your W. Inside of that's the hypothalamus. And then you have this little P-shaped thing hanging off of there, off the infundibulum. That's the pituitary gland. In front of that, You've got the optic chiasma, which is where the optic nerves cross over. So you've got the optic chiasma in front and the pituitary in the back. Um, this is all in the anterior portion of the diencephalon. If you look in the posterior portion of the diencephalon, you'll see a little pink gland here that has kind of a tail. That's known as your pineal gland, or pineal gland, depending on where you're from. But the, the, the pineal gland or pineal gland is going to come up here on the back side of the hypothalamus and it's going to have a tail that slips up into this spot known as the third ventricle, which we'll talk about in a little while. Oh, today, yeah, I'm sorry, my camera went down. Okay, the, the pineal gland is right here on the posterior surface of the uh, thalamus and it has a little tail that slips up in here to the third ventricle, which is a space inside the brain that we'll talk about in just a minute. Your pineal gland secretes melatonin, which regulates your sleep-wake cycles and different things like that. Um, Let me show it again on the model. Oh, on the model. There we go. You got pineal with a little tail going into this area right around the thalamus. And then on the front side of the thalamus, the anterior side, you've got the W-shaped region that is the hypothalamus. And then hanging off the hypothalamus, you have the infundibulum, which has the little ball which is called the pituitary gland. Okay, um, let's stop there. All right, now we're gonna talk about the cerebellum. Remember you have the cerebrum, which is what my hand's holding up here, and then you have the 
brain stem in the front and then you have the cerebellum in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the cerebellum off and let you see what it looks like. The first thing that you're going to see are these two large, they look like pillars almost, and they actually are called cerebellar peduncles. And what they do is they help, I got it upside down, they are just uh, tracks of uh, fibers that connect the cerebellum to the brain stem here. So you have these cerebellar peduncles or just connections or pillars that kind of connect the cerebellum to the brain stem. They actually come in right here at the pons of the brain stem. If you open up the cerebellum and just split it in half, the first thing that you're going to see is what looks like a, a tree or a bush, this white thing here. It's actually known as the arbor vita, which literally translates to me tree of life. Um, it looks more like a bush of life to me, but they call it the arbor vita. Uh, this again is white matter, so this is going to be myelinated um, axons and fibers running through the cerebellum. The brown part here is all going to be your gray matter of the medulla, which is going to be, um, excuse me, gray matter of your cerebellum. So you'd call that your cerebellar cortex, and then the white part would be your uh, cerebellar medulla area, which is the arbor vita. Um, and remember, this all just coordinates functions of uh, motor movement. All right, then you also have um, the brain stem. I'm going to kind of pull all this off because it's just going to fall off. But you've got the brain stem right here, which is uh, formed from the pons and the medulla. And remember, the brain stem has the vegetative functions that just keep you going your heartbeat, your breathing rate, your cough reflexes, different things like that. The pons is this kind of puffy area in the front or anterior portion, and the pons literally translates uh, into bridge, that's the meaning of it, and so that's a bridge of fibers there. And then you have down here the medulla oblongata. The medulla is more where you have your cardiovascular center and your uh, respiratory center and things like that, so that's more of your vegetative functions right there. And then in between the brain stem and the diencephalon, You've got this little area in there, and the main thing that you're going to see in that area, I'm going to turn it to the back side, um, is what you call the uh, mesencephalon, or middle part of the brain. And you're going to see these four little bumps right there. There's the pineal gland sticking out, um, but you have these four little bumps. Those are known as the corpora quadrigemini. Corpora meaning body, quad meaning four. Gemini twins, so it's the four bodies of twins, but basically you just have these four bumps. The upper two bumps here are known as the superior colliculi, and they're more involved with vision and eye movement. And then the two lower bumps are the inferior colliculi, and they're more involved with the uh, auditory centers. Um, and that's it on what you need to know for brain structures. The other thing that we need to talk about with the brain is on the inside of the brain, you've got spaces or cavities that are filled with fluid and they're known as ventricles. So this is a model of the ventricles. So if you just filled up the brain with wax on the inside and then chipped away all the brain tissue, this is what you're going to be left with, these little spaces that are found in the ventricles. So you have two what are called lateral ventricles, these kind of C-shaped ventricles right here. You have a right and left lateral ventricle. And these lateral ventricles are going to run right underneath the corpus callosum. So there's your corpus callosum, that fiber band between the right and left cerebral hemispheres, and you see that space right there? That would be the right lateral ventricle because this is the right cerebral hemisphere. So there's the right uh, lateral ventricle. You can also call it the second ventricle. The first ventricle is going to be the left lateral ventricle. The second ventricle is going to be the right lateral ventricle. And then right in between the right and left lateral ventricles, you've got this little flat part right here, and it's tiny. That's your third ventricle. And your third ventricle is going to be this one that is kind of sitting on the outside of this uh, thalamus. So if you'll find your lateral ventricle, which is the one that runs right under the corpus callosum, then you're going to see that rounded area right there, which is the thalamus. There's your kind of hypothalamus area right there. But there's just a little flat space right there. It's as if I put my two hands together. They're not actually touching everywhere because I have a little indention right there. So that's pretty much all the third ventricle is. Um, and remember, you've got the pineal gland that goes 
up the tail of it goes up into that third ventricle. So there's the third ventricle. There's the thalamus, the hypothalamus, that's the pituitary gland, and then on the posterior side you've got the pineal gland with its tail coming up in here into the third ventricle. And then the fourth ventricle is going to be this one right here that comes down and it's got a little canal there that leads to this fourth ventricle. That canal is known as the cerebral aqueduct. And you can see the cerebral aqueduct coming right down from this third ventricle going right there. Well, if you put your um, cerebellum back on here, you'll see that it fits, well, I had it right, fits like this and Wrong one right here, excuse me. I'll get it figured out. I had it right there, like that. Okay, so you've got the fourth ventricle is going to be this space right in here between the cerebellum and the brain stem. So you've got third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct, and then the fourth ventricle right down here between the cerebellum and the brain stem. And remember, floating inside all of these ventricles, you're going to have cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid flows inside the ventricles. It also flows into the central canal of the spinal cord, and then it flows all over the outside in the subarachnoid space. So that's it for your ventricles. Let me add one more thing about the ventricles. You also have um, this mass of uh, capillaries inside the ventricles known as the choroid plexus. And you'll see that it's kind of marked in pink here. And these choroid plexes are the place where cerebrospinal fluid is formed. So you're forming it in here, you're putting it into these ventricles, and then you suck it back up through the arachnoid villi, and your lecture teacher will talk more about that.